We have a trade. Just a few days before the NBA draft, the Pelicans and Grizzlies have come through with our first really significant trade so far the offseason. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. If you are new, be sure to subscribe to the channel for new content every single day, including as soon as stuff like this happens. Socials are up there. Leave a like rating on the video if you enjoy it. Let's go and get started. Okay, so here's the deal as a whole, and I'll talk about it from both sides. We'll talk about what all this means. This is a really, really interesting one. So the Grizzlies are getting Eric Bledsoe, Steven Adams, a 2022 Lakers pick, the 10th pick in this draft and the 40th pick in this draft. The Pelicans are getting Jonas Valanciunas, the 51st pick in this draft, and the 17th pick in this draft. Let's go through the notes that I have first for New Orleans. So the biggest thing that they're doing here is they're basically acquiring cap space. They're moving back in the draft. They're giving up two players in exchange for one. They're giving up an extra draft asset for next season to create a significant amount of cap space. I mean, this is not a small amount. They're going from over $90 million in projected payroll for next season into $70 million in projected payroll for next season. They're shaving over $20 million off their payroll for next year by dumping Eric Bledsoe and Steven Adams in exchange for Jonas Valanciunas. And that is a huge, huge deal for multiple different reasons. One, they have some looming free agents, most notably Lonzo Ball, who's a restricted free agent, who's going to have a significant amount of value. And there's been a lot of rumors on both sides about whether or not they're going to want to retain him, what they're willing to re-sign him to. This gives them a little bit more flexibility to either re-sign him, re-sign him and go out and get somebody else, go out and get somebody else, or just allow them to be a little bit more comfortable with a higher number for Lonzo Ball when it comes to his restricted free agency, or what is in my opinion more likely, they have someone in mind or a couple of players in mind to add to this roster in free agency, and the opening up of this cap space allows them to do that much easier. The reasoning behind that, I'm not saying they don't want to bring Lonzo back, but there's there's just been a lot of conflicting reports on whether they want to do that. And if they wanted to bring back Lonzo, this isn't a trade that they had to make. They would have been able to do that with or without this trade because you can re-sign your own players, Lonzo being a restricted free agent, by going over the salary cap. But opening up this much cap space, yes, makes it a little bit more palatable to bring back Lonzo on whatever contract he eventually signs and they could potentially match. But more likely, in my opinion, means that they are targeting a specific player in free agency that is going to be worth 20 plus million dollars in pay in, in uh, salary because they now have the ability to do that. I mean, 70 million puts them in like max contract level territory. I'm not saying they're signing anybody to a max, but opening up that much actual cap space when they do have someone in Lonzo that they need to bring back in restricted free agency. It's just a lot more flexibility here. And they're giving up, you know, a good amount to be able to do so. Going from 10 to 17 in this class, going back in the second round as well, giving up an extra first round pick. And you can say what you want about Steven Adams and Eric Bledsoe, but when you're going from two players to one, it's obviously a relatively significant deal. It seems like the mindset here for New Orleans is... We've already got a lot of young talent. We've got Brandon Ingram. We've got Zion. We've got some other complimentary options. We've got Lonzo, who we want to bring back. The 10th pick in the draft isn't incredibly valuable to us. Let's use that and leverage that into cap space to bring in a veteran potentially in free agency or bring back Lonzo Ball. The other interesting part is I personally think they're getting the best player in the trade as well. Valanchunas, we'll talk about this in the Memphis section. I was a little surprised they were so willing to give him up. Um, because he's been a really, really good player for them. Granted, he's on one year less of a contract than those other two guys. But still, I think that New Orleans is getting the best player. They're getting a ton of cap space. They're moving back a bit in the draft and giving up assets. But that extra Lakers pick is really not going to be that big of a deal. It's most likely going to be in the 20s next year. And it's a nice asset to have, but they've got plenty of other picks. And getting the best player here as well is significant. So bottom line, they get better. They clear up a bit of a backcourt log jam, log jam there between Bloodzo and Ball and the other guards they have, opening up some space for guys like Nikhil Alexander Walker. Uh, and they have the opportunity to now bring in a big time free agent. And typically, like I said, these are the kinds of moves when it comes to clearing cap space that teams typically only make if they have a player in mind. Because when you're giving up assets and you're giving up multiple players to create space, you don't really do that unless you feel pretty confident about your ability to bring in one or two guys. And New Orleans is now certainly going to have that opportunity logistically. Memphis, they are using the, the, the cap space that they have to get extra draft capital to move up in this draft and they turn one player into two. Now, granted, Steven Adams and Eric Bledsoe were the two players, 
but it, they're still NBA players, and Eric Bledsoe can play alongside John Morant, assuming that one of those guys can figure out how to be a consistent three-point shooter, fingers crossed. And Steven Adams, you know, fills the spot at the five spot that Jonas Valanciunas is now going to vacate. Again, I'm a little surprised that Memphis was willing to give up JV because he's been really, really good for them, part of that Marcus All trade back a couple of years ago. And both of these guys are on longer and bigger contracts. Granted, it's only one more year. It's only a couple million apiece. But when you're combining the two, you're adding $20 million dollars uh, to your payroll in comparison to having someone like JV on the roster. Now, granted, moving up seven spots in this draft can be significant. For most people, though, it doesn't seem like the difference between 17 and 10 is all that big of a deal. So I'm sure Memphis has someone in mind here that they're moving up for, but maybe this isn't as significant of a jump talent-wise from 17 to 10 in this draft as maybe it would be in some other classes. Now, granted, it's not like Memphis was going to go out and sign any big time free agents anyway. So maybe this is a better utilization of their cap space. And these contracts that they have now taken on line up pretty well with some of the extensions they're going to have coming up. So both of these guys are now 2023 expiring contracts. Uh, so they have this upcoming year, and then one more. And so there'll be big expirings going into that off season that they could potentially use at the deadline that year. And Bledsoe's contract is non-guaranteed for that 22-23 season, which is also the first year the new Jaron Jackson Jr. extension would kick in. And then Steven Adams' deal would run out uh, the same year that a new John Moran extension would kick in. So we see teams, we've seen teams do this in the past, teams like Boston that have lined up bigger expiring contracts with when some of their younger guys need new extensions to kind of maintain the payroll. It seems like that's kind of something that Memphis has in mind here, where yes, they're taking on an extra year for both of these players but they don't really need that space. And once they do need it, they'll have the opportunity to buy out the rest of Ledso's contract. And then they'll also have Adams coming off uh, as a free agent in 2023 as well. I don't like this move as much for Memphis as I do for New Orleans. Again, unless they go and get somebody at 10 that is really, really helpful to their roster, I'm just not a fan of taking on this month's salary cap space. It's nice to get the extra pick. It's nice to move up seven spots. But when you're giving up, again, what I think is the best player on the, you know, in the trade in Jonas Valanciunas and someone that's been really good and productive for you, and you're bringing in two guys that are certainly questionable in terms of a fit, it's not like this is a Memphis team that has a ton of spacing to begin with, and neither of these guys are going to help them with that. So I would imagine they're moving up for a reason. They'd like to have that extra asset. All that makes total sense. And when you're comparing the young talent of these two teams, I think New Orleans feels pretty confident in where they're at in terms of the top level talent they have. So 10 probably doesn't mean that much to them. And from Memphis, you know, there's some question marks about Jaron Jackson. Of course, John Morant's fantastic. But yeah, maybe there is a little bit more motivation for them to go up in the draft and try and get an all-star level player potentially at 10, which we've seen teams do in the past. And so I can understand that contextually for each team, but outside of the draft picks, outside of moving up and down, just when it comes to adding this much to your payroll, and again, just the, the, the level of players on the court for you next year, I like to trade more for New Orleans than I do for Memphis, but this is an interesting one. These are the kind of trades that I love because it's very easy when, when James Harden or whoever gets traded, when it's a big-time star trade, it's very easy to tell this is why it's a good thing for this team, this is why it's a good thing for this team. One team's rebuilding, one's trying to push for a title. But things like this where you have to kind of look at it a little bit uh, – a little bit more and look into it, really fully understand what's happening for both teams and the motivation for each team. These are really, really fun. It's going to be one that maybe we'll look back on in a couple of years and see how it set up Memphis, New Orleans uh, in a really positive way. So this is one that I, I hadn't made a video on it, but I'd seen some rumors about, I'm making a video tomorrow about some NBA draft trade rumors, and this was going to be on it. Memphis, New Orleans talking about switching 10 and 17. I didn't know JV was involved um, at the time the rumors were coming out. I thought it was just, you know, Bloodzone Adams or one of the two and then trying to figure out from there. Uh, but a really, really unique and an interesting situation. I like it a little bit more for New Orleans, but I think you can make a case for both sides. And ultimately, I think it sets up a really, really interesting offseason scenario for the Pelicans with, is this for Lonzo? And then just having some extra flexibility beyond that. Is this for Lonzo and somebody else? Is this for Kyle Lowry, De DeMar DeRozan, whatever the case may be? New Orleans pretty clearly understands the position that they're in from a talent standpoint where they've got Zion, they've got Brandon Ingram, but they've got to start doing something with that. 
And the 10th pick in the draft wasn't really going to help them do that that much. So now they'll be at 17. Maybe they could potentially do something with that where they do 17 and something else and a sign and trade for Lowry. Whatever the case may be, New Orleans is in a really, really good spot here to potentially do some things this offseason. And uh, we'll see who Memphis goes and gets at 10. Maybe they get a real difference maker uh, that'll be huge for them. But that is going to be the end of today's video. I guys think the second of today's video, actually. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said in the beginning, consider subscribing to the channel. New NBA content every single day. And whenever stuff like this happens that I deem worthy of a video, if I'm around, if I'm at the house, typically I hop into the uh, into the office here and, and make a video. So if that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing. That's the end of the video. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Like I said, this is the second video. If you guys missed the one earlier today, and then I'll have a regular one out tomorrow as well to normal time. Just kind of an extra surprise video as we get started here with what's probably going to be a really, really busy draft week here. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Once again, my name is Tucker. Uh, leave a like rating. Consider subscribing to the channel as well. And check out the socials at the bottom of the screen as well. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Peace, fellas.